Hello Wildlanders, SK here. Today, we are going to be discussing ways to handle the sometimes overwhelming early game experience. One of the most common complaints I have seen on my videos, as well as the Wildlander Reddit, is that the beginning of the game is too difficult, and players feel like they are forced to chop wood for long stretches of time before they can begin exploring. My goal with this video is to solve this issue and give useful advice on ways to immediately get out of town and start your adventure. The first thing worth mentioning is that all starting areas are not made equally. This was a lesson hard learned from my first playthrough. I decided to start at Dawnstar in the wild and within a couple minutes travel time I was jumped by wolves and then a couple minutes later I was attacked once more by bandits. Here is an example of different difficulties from starting areas. Whiterun is much easier of a start than Dawnstar. This is because not only does Whiterun have Riverwood nearby, which acts as a safer area to travel, but it also is in a warmer climate that requires little planning to survive in, whereas Dawnstar does not have any towns that are a safe distance away. Dawnstar also has a severe cold climate that requires a lot of planning to deal with, or you just risk freezing to death. To top it off, Whiterun typically has lower level wildlife such as wolves and mud crabs in close proximity, making travel less dangerous. I will add that heading into the backyard of Whiterun tends to be overrun with larger wildlife, so this is something to keep in mind. Dawnstar, however, has trolls right next door which are practically unkillable for newer players. They also have a number of roaming bandits that feel as if they are around every corner and a variety of wildlife at Dawnstar's doorsteps, such as bears and saber cats. For an easier start, I recommend avoiding starting in Markarth, Morthal, Dawnstar, or Windhelm for very similar reasons until you get more used to the mechanics in Wildlander. Additionally, for the easiest beginning to your adventure, I recommend starting in town as opposed to the wilds. The reason for this is so you can take some time to purchase relevant equipment, such as foods that provide stamina regeneration, a backpack so you can avoid becoming quickly over-encumbered, and potions to help you out of a pinch. Starting in town also gives you the benefit that you can take some time to plan where you want to go and what you want to do without the risk of being ambushed by enemies immediately. When you do first leave town, I recommend starting off doing a small perimeter of the surrounding area. This allows you to get a good idea of what enemy areas are around, what places are safer to traverse, as well as where to avoid, such as a troll den. The goal here is to see wildlife before they get a chance to notice you. Once you have identified local wildlife, caves, towers, etc., the next step is to see if there are any camping sites nearby. Most towns have a small camping site close by that can be used to stay warm, sleep at rent free, and often, but not always, these sites have chests and such to store your items as well. If you do find a campsite with a lit campfire, the good news is that the fire will never go out even if it's raining. If you are in a colder climate, these campsites are a safe haven to avoid the bitter cold. An important note, not all campfires are created equally. Naturally occurring campfires can keep you warm, but do not help progress your campfire skills, nor do they give you access to these skills. Also, when you are making a campfire, once you upgrade it to the maximum strength, it will give you a 5% buff to gaining experience for the next 6 hours. I recommend starting the campfire early in the day before you head out so that everything you do is more beneficial. Also with campfires, tinder is going to affect how warm you actually get from the campfire. What's the biggest tip you have for survival in Wildlander? Let me know in the comments below. Moving on to your home base, while you can lay claim to a camping site, I personally recommend looking for an abandoned cave or tower, and then just crafting a chest to use for storage. Crafting a chest will require that you have the first perk in smithing, and you will also need a builder's toolkit. While this is not a requirement, it does make the early game much easier. Some places don't have obvious empty caves nearby, so you will want to sneak around seeing if you would likely be able to clear out a cave, or if it makes sense for you to hightail it out of there. The benefit of using a cave or tower as a home base is that you can avoid wildlife periodically showing up to cause problems. You can also build out your necessities such as storage, a tanning rack, arcane enchanter, etc. Areas do reset after a time, however, if you do visit your new camp at least once every 30 days, it will not reset, allowing you to use it indefinitely. 
There is some debate about whether or not containers already within these locations are safe to use. I personally have had four playthroughs and never experienced them resetting or losing my items. With that in mind, use them at your own risk. When exploring, I have a few rules of thumb to ensure a safe passage. Firstly, make sure to have a couple potions of healing and potions of stamina. If you are playing a magic user, make sure to bring magic potions as well. In addition to this, if your race has an ability that can be used once a day, such as Orcs Berserker's Rage, I recommend being tactful and avoiding deadlier combat such as a bandit camp until this ability is available. Next, do not go out at dark. There are a couple reasons for this, one of which is that it's just harder to spot enemies from a distance, but they can still see you and have an easier time getting the drop on you. Secondly, there is a greater chance of running into vampires at night, which will end your playthrough in an instant since they are higher level enemies taking quite a bit to put them down. Also, when traveling, you'll want to walk, not run. This is one of the more common mistakes I have run into. While I understand the temptation to explore as quickly as possible, this puts you at a disadvantage because not only are you unable to see whatever enemies are lying in wait since you're moving so quickly, you are also going to have less stamina available in the event that you run into an enemy. This limits your options and usually means there is no running away. You are forced to stay and fight a potentially losing battle. Once you have properly taken a view of the surrounding locations, the next step is to plan what you are trying to do each day when going out. Are you trying to hunt some smaller animals for food? Did you notice a cave you wanted to check out? Or are you following directions from a missive to deliver an item to a nearby town? Remember, this is a role-playing mod pack. Your character would not be trying to do everything in one day. Outside of the role-playing aspect, it's also a good rule of thumb. This helps you avoid trying to do too much and getting caught with no carry weight, potions, or food to speak of. The good news is that if you run out of food, you can use the forage hotkey to search for nearby items. The foraging ability is great for players who prefer to be in the wilds as often as possible. Not only will you find necessities such as food and wood, but occasionally you will find a unique item such as an enchanted staff that you will need to uncover. After gaining a certain level of proficiency with the forging skill, you will actually be able to choose specifically what you are looking for such as bones, firewood, or food. And if you have the first perk in smithing, you are able to craft special items to help out in the early game such as bone amulets with varying benefits, one of which is additional movement speed, stamina, or health. It may not seem like a lot, but these amulets are actually very helpful in the early game with the buffs that they provide. Also, engraved bones can be used to cure different diseases brought on by wildlife and monsters. In the event that you use these engraved bones but you don't have a disease, they can instead give you a 1 hour blessing which is a huge plus. Not only are these useful for you when traveling, but they can also be sold to help obtain some gold. The good news when you're first starting is since almost anything can be sold, whatever you do find is usually worth bringing back to town to help start amassing your fortune. Because of unlimited carry weight, I recommend that if you are looting a cave or a small bandit camp, that you can store everything extra in a container at the camp so you can come back for it later instead of trying to move around while encumbered. Remember that the items will not reset for up to 30 days, which is plenty of time to come back for them. This brings us to combat. When you are engaged in combat, I recommend focusing on one skill early on since you will usually have limited resources. If you are trying to split progress with skills, it slows down your progression while also making you a jack of all trades good at none. This simply delays your ability to outgrow being taken down by lower level creatures such as wolves. If you are a melee character, you will want to use your bow or crossbow while keeping a distance as often as possible to avoid taking too much damage. Keep in mind that low level bows and crossbows can be broken by an enemy's hit, so when you see them approaching, make sure to switch to your melee weapon or your bow may be broken. If you are a spellcaster who happens to use conjuration, try focusing on conjuration initially to keep the enemies off of you since you likely can't survive too many hits. If you know that wildlife or bandits are very close to town, try asking guards for help and have them follow you. This helps make sure you get safe passage, and since they don't loot the bodies, the spoils are all yours. 
This is a good method for taking on trolls early on, because while the guards distract the trolls, you can swing a torch at it which halts the trolls' health regeneration. This is my personal recommendation for how to take on trolls early on. This last piece of advice is if you plan on doing spell research or you're going to use a training dummy. Firstly, you will want to do this near the end of the day. This is because using these training methods will limit your magicka or stamina until you rest again. The rule here is one hour of training needs two hours of sleep to get back to normal. Also, making the biggest campfire so you can get the experience buff is also useful before using these training techniques, since it will be more fruitful in progressing your level. These were the early game tips I had for you today. I do hope you enjoyed. If you did, leave a like and consider subscribing. Stay safe, Oddlanders.